Okay, today we're going to do a teach back on almost four chapters, right? And the first one will deal with the human blood, right? Okay? So, if you were to be asked the blood that we have, let's approximate these six liters of human blood that flows into our blood vessel, right? So what's inside the blood vessel class? Blood, okay? As simple as that. Don't make it complicated, you know? What's found inside the blood vessel? Blood. It's like if I say, what's found inside the air sac? Air. There you go. If you pay attention, I guarantee you'll get 90 and above. If you pay attention, okay, listen, okay? What's inside the blood vessel? Blood. blood. blood, okay. So blood is part of what tissue? Is that epithelial? Connective. Connective, or is it? Connective. <laughs> Neuro or muscular, so connective tissue. You're absolutely right, okay? So the blood is major components. What are the two major components? Plasma. Plasma. Okay. So you have here, if I were to write the word blood, right? Blood is made up of plasma and four elements. Right? Form elements. Yes. When you're dealing with plasma, that's actually what? What part of the blood would that be? Liquid. The solid part or the liquid part? Why is it liquid part? Because it's mostly made up of water. OMG. Can I get that bottle of water, please? So what is found inside this bottle here? Water. Water. Now remember, 66% of your body weight is water. water. Majority of your plasma, how many percent of the plasma is water? 60, 90, 90. There you go. I can tell who's reading and who's not reading, right? Because 50 and 90 is too 90, big, a big gap, right? Okay, so. Now, so the plasma contains water, right? That's why it's called liquid component, right? Okay, so this is mostly what? Water. Now, what is inside the water? Oxygen. Well, I know H2O is water. Yes, what is inside there? What, aside from water, what else do you find in your plasma? Oh, plasma protein. There you go. Plasma what? Plasma proteins. Proteins. Albumin. Okay, and this includes your what? Albumin. 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 And Globulin. And fibrinogen. And fibrinogen. Okay, fibrinogen. How many of you did this at home? How many of you did a concept map without looking at your notes and do this? Perfect score, I guarantee you. If you do this at home without looking at your notes, you are in good hands. But if you didn't do this, maybe 80%, that's fine. It's still passing because what is passing? 73%, okay? So, what else do you think I should write here? Under the word fibrinogen, why is that important? Oh my gosh! Clot factor. I don't even have to put the ING, that's a waste of ATP. Mm -hmm. What am I writing on the wall? Keywords. Keywords! What's a keyword? Relevant, pertinent words, right? Yeah. I don't want to put everything in my brain. Because the problem if you put everything in your brain, you get what? Lost. And you come up with all the possible answers in the world, and you are not happy with an 80 or 85 or 88, right? So what does cutting factor mean? It allows the blood to? So if you're bleeding, do you need that? Yes. Of course. Now the big question is, so in order for us to become smart, you have to ask yourself, what, where, how, when, okay. My question now therefore, where is the plotting factor produced? Liver. Oh my God, you're so, are you watch a video, huh? Yeah. The, uh, so where do you get all these answers? How many watch a video? Of course, right? Thank you. So, you, you what, so what, Dr. Gamo, if it comes from the liver, what importance would that be to me? Very important. Why? A patient who drinks too much alcohol will develop what? Cirrhosis. Liver cirrhosis, and therefore when you have cirrhosis of the liver, that's basically scar tissue formation or scar or fibrosis, will the liver go into failure? Yes. 
And when the liver goes into failure, will the liver be able to produce your clotting factors? No. And that is what you will learn in my class in pathophysiology. <laughs> because if you know what is normal, Abnormal. Oh my God! <laughs> you can even perfect the score for your NCLEX exam. No room for mistakes, right? Everything is clear. From here to core nursing, for or not? Now you have to sell to go to physiology. How many of you took physiology outside? Excuse me. Physiology before pathophysiology, right? So will that be credited? So you are you coming, coming, coming to me directly for pathophysiology? You still won't be going. Okay, I, I had a, a student. One term in anatomy, the following term was already with me. His name was Miro. I said, where did you took your physiology? Outside. See? He's not with me. With me. Okay. Now, cirrhosis, you fail, the liver fails. Will your blood be able to clot? No. So what do you think will happen to you? Yeah. Well, not yet. Slowly, but surely. Yeah. You will soon die. First, you have skin lesions of bleeding manifestations, such as what? Hematoma, spontaneous. What else? Spider, tele no, you have to come write this down. Like spider web, ichymosis. Don't worry, it will come out in the core nursing exams and, of course, in the NCLEX. In other words, you as a nurse, you must examine your patients. You have a patient with ascites, jaundice, or yellowing of the skin, very thin has been drinking alcohol for the past 50 years since becoming a teenager, and all of a sudden develops liver failure, has to have a liver transplant. But one of the problems that they will encounter will be what? Failure to clap. Why? Because they do not produce what? Amazing. Is there any question that you cannot answer in pathophysiology and in core nursing? None. If you know this thing, you'll probably be even better than your nursing faculty. Believe me. I'm not saying don't tell that to them. Okay. Now this one, why are they important? Osmotic pressure. I like this young lady. Your heart? Hmm? Only for today. Yeah. Okay. Okay, explain. Okay, let's find out. You come up with an answer, but you need to explain to me what is the meaning of oncotic pressure, osmotic pressure? Well, it's uh, osmotic is referring to water. So Diffusion of water. So okay. it's the pressure of... Um, Oh, she's prepared. She just put her. Can I borrow that? You want this? No, no, only this. Okay. Is that in your notes? Is here? Oh, I'm just doing it. Ah, okay, today. just doing it now. Okay. Yeah. So go ahead. I don't know how to explain. So it's the basically okay. the pressure of the of like the plasma and how it goes through. I'm not sure. How okay. Goes. I'll give you an example. If you have two structures here, there's a plasma membrane, right, with regards to the cell. This is A. This is B. Water is here, water is here, right? If I put a lot of albumin and globulin, albumin and globulin, albumin and globulin, and only a few here, which is more concentrated, A or B? A. Mm -hmm. More what? Concentrated. Of what? Albumin and globulin. Albumin and globulin, okay? Here, less what? Concentrated. Concentrated. Which has more water? More water in B and what? In A. Are you following me? Yeah. Where do you have more water? B. B. We have less water? A. We have more solutes like this one? We have more in A, less in B. Correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. The point now is in a solution, you have water and the solute. What is the solute? Albumin and globulin. What is the solvent? OMG. <laughs> now, what is the definition of osmosis? First few chapters of our class. Movement of what? Water. And water alone. It's actually the diffusion of what? Water, water from high? To from low. high? To from low. high? To from low. high? To low. So water will move from A, B to A, or A to B? B to A. B to A, B to a. okay. And you will notice there's more water here and less water here, but you create a pressure called osmotic pressure, whereby, because of the more solute present here on the A, it will what? Look, look at my mouth. It will attract more what? Water, Water towards me. Mm -hmm. Right? So you have a greater osmotic pressure on A, 
which will attract the water to me from high water to low water, okay? Is it important in our body? Yes. Of course, because as you can see here, this is a cell. The cell has water, and what do you call the water inside the cell? Intercellular water or fluid compartment. What do you call the water outside the cell? Extracellular fluid compartment. Or in this case, if you have a blood vessel there, or capillary, this is what? Yes, Mr. Petrosian, you said something? Of course, interstitial fluid compartment. Another cell, another cell. Intercellular means inside the cell, outside will be interstitial fluid, which is considered part of your what? Extracellular fluid. Because it's outside what? What about the water inside the blood vessel? Is that intracellular or extracellular? Huh? Huh? Is there any cell here? No. Oh, no. Okay. It's part of the plasma. Does it make sense? You understand? It's part of the intravascular. Intra means inside the vascular means blood vessel. That's your plasma, correct? Now, what about if you have a red blood cell there? What do you call the fluid inside the red blood cell? Or the white blood cell? What do you call the fluid inside the white blood cell and the red blood cell? Huh? Yes? Why? Where is the water found? Inside the cell. Oh my God. So easy, right? She goes like this. If the water is inside the cell, intercellular, 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 intercellular. Outside the what cell? Intercell extracellular, but what, what's the thing? Interstitial. What about outside the red blood cell and the white blood cell? Extra, but intravascular. Why? It's inside the blood vessel. So E C F E C F I C F I C F I C F. Now, where do you find most of the water in the body? Intra or extra? Intra. Who needs the water? Who needs the water? Cells. Who let the dogs out? No, I'm just kidding. The cells. So, who do you think will have a greater compartment? Sixty percent. Intra or extra? Intra. Because who needs the water? Cells. Very good. So will this be if affecting, for example, if you have hypoalbuminemia? What is hypoalbuminemia? Low. Low. So you have low albumin here and high albumin there. How do you think the water will move? From the interstitial fluid or to the so you have high albumin here, low albumin here? From here to here, right? What about if it's the other way, way around? If hyperalbumin, then you have what? And you end up with edema. Does that make sense? Yeah. You understand? So is it important for you to know these things when you go to next terms? Physiology. Because in next term, not only are you going to deal with this, but mostly now with what? Calculations, osmotic pressure, oncotic pressure. You understand? Yeah. Okay, now. Liver, fibrinogen. Now, what about globulin? Is there something that's important there? Immunoglobulin. Okay, immunoglobulin, or IgA, IgE, IgD. Immunoglobulin, for example, breast milk, the first colostrum milk. When the baby, mother is pregnant, the first milk that comes from the breast is called colostrum. Does it contain immunoglobulin? Yes. And what is the name of that immunoglobulin in breast milk? Now, it's not your fault, it's my fault. I will answer my own question. It's called IgA. Is it therefore imperative that you give your baby, if you happen to be pregnant, how many of you are planning to have kids here? Good for you. Don't forget what I told you, colostrum. Give it to your baby, not to your, okay, baby, okay. I was about to say a joke, but I might be in trouble, okay. <laughs> to the baby, please, por favor. Okay, why, does that, why is that important? The colostrum contains a lot of what? Immunoglobulin, or what we call antibodies, against what? The antigen. What is the antigen? The enemy. The virus or the bacteria. Is that clear? Okay. So, is that globulin important? Yes. Because it is a component of what we call immunoglobulin. So, therefore, what is immunoglobulin made of? Huh? 
What did you say? Coagulant. Okay, I, I, I need to clean my ear. I thought I, thought I heard coagulant. <laughs> globulin, of course. As simple as that. It's made of globulin. And what is globulin? Plasma? Protein. 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 Now, do you realize where do you, where do you, where do you put all our store or all our proteins after we eat them? We already had the lab, right? In the lab in AR. What is the organ that produces the cutting factors? What is the organ that stores the proteins that has been absorbed in the small intestine? Okay, the answer is the liver too. <laughs> the liver, through the portal vein. Remember the portal vein, remember? See this in AR, right? Mental reality, portal vein. Remember I told you if you were paying attention to me when I do my, well, in the lab, it's a unique vein because the portal vein instead of hepatic, no, hepatic vein brings blood to what? The vena cava, but the portal vein from the small intestine to where? Liver, right? Okay, do you understand? Now, so all of these will be found where? How important therefore is the liver? Very important, okay? Now, now, let's go to the form elements. Okay, what are these form elements, class? I should be sure it's still on. Well, let's say it again. Okay, red blood cell, white blood cell, white blood cell, and plate that. What's another name for red blood cell? Erythro red side bean cell. What about for white blood cell? What does leuco mean? White side cell. What about platelet? It's just platelet. Why? We used to call it thrombocyte because thrombus means what? A stationary blood clot. But we no longer use the word thrombocyte because cyte means what? Cell. Why? Because this word, platelet, is not a cell. But what is it? I really like this class. You are so prepared. I am so happy if all of you will get a perfect score today, right? A fragment of what? A cell. Now, now I want to go beyond that. Let's see how much you have studied for this class. What is the name of that cell? Megacaryocyte. Yeah! How come you know? Don't tell me video again. Video. Oh, shit. Oh, sorry. Okay. Oh, really? I just, there's nothing for me to talk there again. Okay? So, megacaryocyte, right? Okay, so. I am a, if I were a smart guy or person, I would do what I'm doing here right now. How many times a day? Five times, ten times. It's up to you. To you? Okay. So get a whiteboard from Walmart for $17. You have a big one like this. For $10, as big as this. I, I did my research already. 10, 17. Write down, erase, then write down again, erase. Okay? So. Fragment. I not, do I need to put the word cell? No. no. Waste of ink and dollars, right? Because in my mind, I don't know what it means. Fragment, bang, cell. Okay. What cell? Mega, cardio, right? Big. Mega means big, right? Okay. And what is this cell fragment form? Blood. What? Blood what? Blood clotting. Okay. Blood clotting too. So, do you realize how important is immuno, uh, the clotting factors for clotting? Mm -hmm. Do you realize how important the platelet is for clotting? Yeah. So, are they both important for blood clotting? Yes. What happens if your platelet count is low? Thrombocytopenia. This is Julian, what is thrombocytopenia? It's a low platelet count. Can you give me the exact number of what is considered low platelet Under 80, count? 80, huh? Under 80,000. What? How much? So some books, 150,000. So in other words, what I'm trying to say is that the moment is below that number, then you have what? Plat low platelet count. So we need to know why. why. Why? Why is the platelet count low? Because if your platelet count is low, then you need to, you need to transfuse the patient with what? Platelet constant. Don't, don't you love medicine? Your low, low platelet, we get platelet count. But we need to find out why. We need to do a BMA or bone marrow aspirate. Find out what's wrong with your what? Where is this platelet produced? I, I can really tell that you're so pre pre really prepared. Yellow marrow or red bone marrow? Red. And where's the red bone marrow fun? In the? In the bone. Why not the yellow bone marrow? What is found in the yellow bone marrow? And what is the color of fat? Yellow. 
Oh, shucks. <laughs> okay. Platelet. Thrombocytopenia. There are many possibilities. You will learn this when you go to pathophysiology. Insecticide can uh, 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 effect of insecticides on the bone marrow. Now, white blood cell? <coughs> hmm? Leukocyte. What are the two types of leukocytes? Huh? And and what does A mean? Without. That means the, type of the cytoplasm does not have any granules, right? Mm -hmm. Under granular, what do you have? Neutrophil. Neutrophil. Basophil. 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 And you Eosinophil. 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 Under our granular side, what do you have? Monocyte. Monocyte. And lymphocyte. Okay. Now, you are pressed for time. I need to know as much as I can, but I need to retain only information that is what? Relevant, because the information that I do not need, I throw them in the garbage, kind of trash can. The only thing I need to retain is the information I need to become a smart, competent, critical thinking nurse. A lot of you read the book and you say, I'm really smart, I can pass this exam. And when you take the exam, you got a score of 80. Because number one, maybe you did not understand. Number two, you did not retain the information that you were supposed to what? Retain. I even gave you a study guide. Can you not create your own study guide without me giving you a study guide? You should, okay, I'll come up with your own. Because some people in corners may not even give you a study guide, okay? Now, neutrophil. Give me a word. Neutrophil. Give me a word that's important for neutrophil. That's when they're elevated. Yes, my dear, you're raising your hand. Granules. Well, they all have granules, my dear. Granulocyte, granules, granules, granules. Bacterial. There you go. Elevated when there is what? Inflammation. Bacterial infection. It's already infection, my dear. Does anybody know the normal value of your neutrophil? 50 to 70. 50 to 70 percent, so what's a higher number? 70. Am I going to remember 70, my age, when I will be 10 years from now or 12 <laughs> years from now? Yeah. Why do you need to remember 70 percent, Kelsey? Because they're the most common. Why do you want to remember number 70 for neutrophils, Kelsey? <laughs> huh? What did I just tell you a while ago? When it is elevated, it will be what? Inflammation. Infection. So, so what number should you remember, 50 or 70? 70. 70. Because it should be greater than what? 70, my dear. <laughs> There's nothing that you can answer, believe me. Which one will I remember, 50 or 70? 70. Now, what happens if you remember 50? Your answer will be wrong. You will not pass the nursing board exam. I promise you. Because in the nursing board, nursing board, I combine board with nursing. In the board nursing. You will not be given the normal values of these. 50 to 70. My brain is limited, Dr. Gamma. What should I remember? 70. What should I remember? 70. I don't care about the 50! Because if you are taking down notes, you are paying attention if, instead of opening your mouth, if it's greater than what? 70. There you go. And what kind of infection are we dealing here with? Bacterial. Now, is that the only thing I want you to remember about neutrophil? No. What do you think will I ask you for? What is another name for neutrophil? Because when the doctor calls you at 2 in the morning, uh, this is Dr. Gamo speaking, and speak with the nurse first, the nurse assigned to Mr. Smith, my patient. Mr. Yes, my dear, you raising your hand? Don't tell them. No, I'm just kidding. Tell them, what is it? Where did you get that information? Huh? I said that on video? Oh, shucks. Really? You took down notes from my video? Why? Because you want to take a perfect score in this class? 
course. So you took down notes. Wow. Is that the right thing to do? Usually. Usually. <laughs> but how many would do that? How many would take down notes during watching a video? That, that's good. That's good. Yeah, because she said usually. Not, not just usually. All the time. Okay. Polly, what? My dear, what's your name? Huh? Last name. Vives. Vives. How do you spell polymorphonuclear? I want spelling to be correct. P Vives. O L Y M O R F P F T H L nucleus. No. Nucleus or nuclear? Uh, nuclei. It's not polymorphonucleus. It is polymorpho what? <laughs> not your bad. My bad. Your bad. I bad. I don't know why people use my bad. You know. Poly. Morpho nuclear. Now, why do you think it's important to know the other name of neutrophil, Ms. Vives? Because it might show up in the nursing. Huh? In the nursing exam. Not only that, if the doctor calls you at 2 in the morning, oh, okay. uh, uh, can I speak with Ms. Vives aside to Mr. Smith? Uh, this is Dr. Gamo speaking. Uh, I understand that our patient, Mr. Smith, 70 year old male, was diagnosed with community acquired pneumonia today, productive cough of yellow green phlegm with fever for the past one week, now developing respiratory distress. That's the reason why I admitted this patient. I ordered stat CBC, complete blood count, Ms. Vives. When that means I need to know the red blood cell count, the white blood cell count, which includes WBC with differential count. When I say differential count, I want to know the value of each of these. This is what's called WBC differential count. This is what you will encounter in the hospital. Now, I'll ask Ms. Vives. Uh, Ms. Vives, this is Dr. Gamo. Can you please tell me the values? The chart will be, oh, whenever you talk to the doctor, make sure everything is in front of you. Unless, of course, it's computerized. Uh, Ms. Vives, can you tell me the value of the polymorphonucleus? Two things can happen here. If Ms. Vives does not know the answer, what the heck is polymorphonucleus? There will be what? Absolute silence on the other end of the line. And what do you think will I think? A graduate of St. Mary's School of Nursing with a passing grade of 55%. But because you are from West Coast and you are smart, if I ask you, what is the value of the polymorphonuclear Ms. Vives? You are from West Coast, I understand, right? What is that? The value of what cell? What cell? The neutrophil. And what is the critical value for this to become elevated to be considered bacterial infection, Ms. Vives? 70 or more will be what? Or more than 70, right? You understand, Ms. Vives? Yes. How important it is to know the polymorphonucleus? Mm -hmm. Now, what do you call those immature neutrophils? I don't know if you read Red Father. How many of you read the book? And hopefully you didn't rely on the study guide and the, the PowerPoints. What do you call those young neutrophils? I'll give you a clue. It begins with letter B as in boy. Huh? That is not neutrophil, my dear. That's a basophil. My question was, what do you call a young, immature neutrophil? I'll give you a clue. One direction. Huh? Yes, yes. What is it, Mr. Thomas? Band. I don't know. Huh? Band. How do you spell band? B-A-N-D. Band. Band. You know band. The Beatles. Band. A band sound. Band. Is that in the book? Be sure. Oh, can you can you can you Google it? Immature neutrophils. Yeah, What's the answer, my dear? Okay. Now, what is the importance of if you do a peripheral blood smear and you see bands or young neutrophils, B A N D S? What does it imply? Yes. It helps you distinguish young febrile children with bacterial or respiratory viral infections. We have established that. In adults like us, what happens if your bands in your aspirate or uh, uh, in your uh, peripheral smear? What does it tell you? You have an infection and it needs money. Huh? You have an infection and it needs money. 
infection. You have a bacterial, what kind of, what kind of bacterial infection are we dealing with? Huh? Inflammation of the body. Okay, relax, relax, chill. We already know that it's bacterial, but if I do a peripheral smear, I study the different types of white blood cells, and we found out that there is the presence of bands. It tells me that there is what? Simple infection, overwhelming infection. Overwhelming infection. Because we now to, we need to recruit what? The young, immature, 16 year old. When do you get to join the military? At what age? 18. 18. The very young, virgin, innocent, don't even know how to use the gun yet. Neutrophils. Yeah. It's good. You don't worry, you'll shift to the left. You will counter that again and again and again. Okay. Base of pill. Allergy. Okay. Allergy? What else? Pepper Allergy, right? Pepper okay. Histamine. With histamine release. What about base of pill? Parasites. Allergy and then what? Parasitic infection. Uh, what do you mean by parasite? Uh, parasite for what? Okay, like ask, have you heard of Ascaris pinworm, intestinal worm? It is not common in the United States, common in third world countries, right? Intestinal, uh, they don't have any slippers, they're so poor. The, the organism enters their feet and then resides in their what? It's large intestine. And if you, it, it becomes like Ascaris lombricoides, it's like what? Spaghetti, you know? Worms, like a small snake there inside, so many of them, okay? Intestinal parasitism. So two words for eosinophil, allergy, parasites. Mm -hmm. Basophil, only allergy, think of histamine, release, we give antihistaminic for allergy. Now, what about, what is monocyte? It's a form of what? The largest white blood cell. Okay, it's the largest lymphocyte, right? Okay, and then what about, under the word lymphocyte, there are three types. T, B, B, B and, and then what? And what does NK mean? Natural killer. The natural killer cells. They're also important for what? Immunosurveillance, the, the CIA, right? Natural killer, immuno what? Surveillance. Surveillance. Now what is the T cell important for? Cell mediated what? Immunity. What about B cell? It's antibody mediated. Okay, what's another name for antibody mediated? Very good, I know you are very prepared. Antibody mediated. In other words, which will produce the antibodies? The B or the B? B. There's only B as in boy. What about the T? They don't produce antibodies, there are many types of T. T helper? T cell. Cytotoxic T cell, T memory cells. Which one, which one? Cell mediated, T cell. Which means cell against another cell. The T cell will attack another bacterial cell. Cytotoxic, T cell. This attacks. Now what about humoral? The B cell produces what? Becomes the plasma cell, and the plasma cell produces what? Antibodies or immunoglobulins, which causes you to develop humoral, H-U-M-O-R-A-L, or what we call antibody-mediated immunity. So antibody-mediated, humoral, Cell mediated for T. Does it make sense? Yes. Okay. Now, so make sure you see the difference: granulocytes, are granulocytes, T and B. Which one is affected or attacked by the human HIV virus? Immunity. Cells. Cells. Give me a T. Give me a T. So that's why you have to be careful. Unprotected sex can get you what? HIV, AIDS, right? How do we monitor if we're giving you antiviral medications for HIV infection that you or our, our drugs are effective? You would expect the levels of what? To go up. That we are winning the war against what? HIV. HIV. Do, you, do, you see, do you see the importance of the things we learn here? When you become future nurses, it's not because we want you to become doctors, but you will be able to understand what uh, are we doing for a patient to save their lives. What is the correlation between the levels of T cells in response to our treatment? If our treatment is effective, if we're giving antiviral medications, 
for HIV infection, you will expect the T cell count to be what? Do you understand? Okay, do you understand? Okay. So again, be aware. Now, where is the white blood cell count, white, white blood cell produced? Where? Okay, I just wanted to know if you still know the answer, right? Red bone marrow, right? Okay. For, for example, in the case of the T cell, it's produced in the red bone marrow, but where does it mature? Hmm? There you go. What's the first letter of T cell? What's the first letter of thymus? T. Now, let's find out. How many of you remember what exactly is the thymus gland? Mediastinum. Perfect, Mr. Petrosian, in the mediastinum, in the chest. Is that different from the thyroid gland? Yes. yes. Thyroid in the neck, thymus here. In front, anterior side disappeared to the heart. Unfortunately, what happens to the thymus gland as we get older? It shrinks. It shrinks after puberty. So when I was 12, 13, 14, never been kissed, never been touched, my thymus gland was so big, just like my heart, so big, full of love. <laughs> After puberty, the thymus gland started to what? Ink, ink, ink. Is that the reason why Dr. Gamo, at the age of 57, who will be 58 in the next 12 days, becomes more prone to infection? Yes. When I was 12, 13, 14, I get sick on a Monday with the flu, I get well on a Tuesday. Now, if Dr. Gamo gets sick on a Monday, two weeks later he's still sick. What is the scientific explanation for that? Due to the regression and atrophy of what gland? Thymus. What gland? Thymus. Do you see what's happening to our body? Can we be able to explain everything that happened to your body? Okay? The B cell produces the bone marrow but goes to the spleen. Okay? I forgot to mention. The T cell, the reason why they need to go to the thymus gland, two things. They need to mature there, learn how to do what? Mano in mano. Like a compound, I'm just joking. Immunocompetence. What is immunocompetence? If this immunosurveillance, immunocompetence means the ability to fight the enemy. And who is the enemy? The antigen, which happens to be what? The bacteria or the virus, right? Does it make sense? Okay? The T cell. Cell mediated because the T cell themselves attack the other cell. Bacterial cell. What about B? It is the antibody that will form an antigen antibody immune complex. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Okay? Now, what about red blood cell? The red blood cell is producing the red bone marrow. How long will it survive? 10 to 10 hours. Oh, 120 days. 120 days. Where did you get the arms? Huh. It's probably a new species of humans, right? How many days? And that's approximately how many months? Four months. Four times 30 is what? 120, right? Okay. That makes sense, right? Four, three to four months, right? Okay, so red blood cell is produced where? White blood cell is produced where? Platelet is produced where? And a lot of people get confused with that. You know, How can it be so confusing with just one, one area? Red bone marrow. Now, after 120 days, what happens to the red blood cell? It dies. On the 119th day, it's walking on the 405 freeway, 405 South freeway, towards what? Splinlandia. And actually, the 91 West, or East. And then 119 days, ah, I am the plate that. Ah. Where's the GPS? Where is Splinlandia, my dear? Make a right turn at <laughs> the 91 East freeway on the left upper quadrant. And then he sees the spleen. He's now happy because that will be his final resting place. <laughs> I'm ready to die and rest. <sighs> Upon reaching the spleen, what happens to the spleen? Uh, the, what happens to the red blood cell? It, uh, it dies. What happens now in the spleen? What will the spleen do to the red blood cell carcass or the dead it body? Recycle, recycle because there's iron. If you remember, the red blood cell has two alpha and two beta globin. Hemoglobin means protein change. Again, remember the word globin? Yeah. Globin, globulin, protein. Red blood cell has two alpha and two beta chains of globin. And each of these globin chain has what? A porphyrin ring called HEM, H-E-M-E, porphyrin ring, which contains the iron. In other words, 
How many can they transport? Four. Oxygen molecules, right? Very good. Four oxygen molecules because four, two alpha, two beta chains. Porphyrin ring has is the hem which contains the iron. Okay. Now the red blood cell is important, right? Because it transports what? Oxygen. What else? Carbon and carbon dioxide, right? Very important, right? If this is a capillary here, the smallest blood vessel, this is the cell. If there is the red blood cell carrying O2 from high to low, what about the cell produces what? CO2 from high to low in the red blood cell. Does it make sense? Okay. So what do you call the condition when the platelet count is low? Oh, I'm sorry, uh, plate, uh, the red blood cell count is low. Anemia. What do you call the condition when the platelet count is high? Polycythemia, right? Simple, okay? Do you understand class? Okay, now, we talked about the red blood cell, we talked about the white blood cell, platelet, okay. Blood typing. The blood type of a person is based on what? The what? The present or surface Wait, 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 slowly, slowly. Presence or absence of surface antigens. Surface antigens found where? Surface. Found where? Surface. Surface of the red blood cell. Of the red blood cell. So this is the dilemma I have sometimes with some students. They know a portion of the answer, but they don't know the entire answer. Surface antigen, if I ask where, the answer is correct. It's on the surface of what? The red blood, the red blood cell. So, red blood cell is a Krispy Kreme donut. If you have A antigen, now, it's not going to be a letter A, but it has to be something like a representation of an A. It could be a circle, it could be a square, but it's just A. What is your blood type? A. Huh? A. A an antigen on the surface is called what? Type one. A. A. Type A. Okay? So this is your red blood cell. Now, what will be on the plasma? Anti what? Anti what? B. Anti B antibodies or immunoglobulins, or they would call it agglutinogen, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, antibodies. So they hate the Bs. They don't like any B for that matter. <laughs> what about type A? B, that's me. Who is type B here? Better give me your name, <laughs> give me your cell phone number. These are two people that I will always save. If this boat is sinking, who do you think I will save? The two of them. Why? Because we have the same blood type. The rest of you, I don't care. I'm just kidding. Unless you're an O. <laughs> you, but you will be second priority. The blood type, I'm just joking, of course. If you are B, you are like me, okay? I am B. So what is found in the surface of my red blood cell? B. And what is found in my anti what? A. I, I hate the A's, I hate this guy. If you happen to be A, don't come to me and say, I will donate my blood to you. Because why? If you donate your blood to me, the moment your blood enters my veins, what will my body say? Eh, 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 enemy, enemy, interceptors, immediate launch, interceptors, immediate launch. What does it mean? <laughs> attack, attack who? Cross the A, back. red blood cell. So the moment your red blood cell that you gave to me enters my veins, the fighting will take place in my booty, in my veins. And what happens to the red blood cell of that person's blood, to me? It will burst, hemolysis. It's called a blood transfusion reaction. But who's gonna suffer? Me, because you gave me the wrong blood type. Can that happen in the hospital? Can you lose your license? So that's the reason why, I don't know if it's being done here, but in the Philippines where I practice for a couple of years, before we do giving the blood, we do what proper cross-matching. What do I mean by that? You always confirm, right? How many of you LVNs here? I think it's probably done here, the same thing, right? In other words, you get the actual blood of this patient, and you get a sample of the bag, and cross-matching is done. Cross or X-matching is done to really, really make sure that the blood from the patient and the blood in the bag will match. How is it possible that the patient's blood, I donated blood downstairs, remember when the truck comes here, and it was improperly labeled, like I am B and they put an A. Oh my gosh. Can that happen? Yes. Is that what you call human error? Yes. But that can human error lead to human death? Yes. Okay. 
What about A, B? Universal So I have A and then I have B. And what about here? No antibodies. And because they have no antibodies, they have the universal what? Recipient. In other words, recipient means I can get any blood because why? I have nothing to fight you off with. I have no antibodies. Who is AB here? <coughs> oh, a couple. Oh, one, two, three. They say it's a rare blood type. That's okay. Now what about O? Universal. Oh, means what? No antigen. No antigen? And what are your antibodies? AMB. You're so lucky. <laughs> You have anti-A and anti-B antibody. What does it mean? How many of you are O here again? Raise your hand. Oh, shucks. So many of you. <laughs> but unfortunately, if you have a, an accident and you need blood transfusion, you can only get from another one. Oh. Why? Because anti-A, no. No. Anti-B, no. This three, no. <laughs> only what? Oh. But the good news is that there's so many of you. <laughs> And there are only three of us be in this class. And maybe for A, B, maybe three or four. Anybody else else a B? Only two, really? Only two Bs there? Aside from Julian and Miss Edner there, and Miss Paul, my gosh. The rest of you are not Bs? How many of you not even know your blood type? Why are you in nursing school in the first place? I think I'm being, but I'm not sure. My mom doesn't even know. OMG. Okay. <laughs> okay. So you, you know what happens in the uh, uh, compatibility in blood transfusion, right? Is this going to come out in the nursing board exam? Definitely. Okay. Definitely. Okay. Now, have you heard? So like me, I am B. I can only get from another B because I am anti-A. There is no A. I cannot get this, I cannot get that. Yeah. I can also what? Second choice is O. That's why I said, oh, you're still okay with me. <laughs> but if the boat is sinking, I will say the two of them. O is second. The rest of you, I don't I have care. A question. If, if, if there's a moment where there's both B and O, does it matter if you take if you were to pick the O versus No, I prefer the B. I don't care about the is, O's. But is there is there a reason why the O is still acceptable to me? I will not die. Okay. Because O is universal so donor. Like if I accidentally right? grab the O bag and I give it to you. Okay. The then you will be fired by me because I am the owner of the hospital. Wait. Why did you give? I'm just kidding. Die. Universal what? No. Donor no. why? No. Because it has no antigen. Does that make sense? Yes, yeah. ma'am. Even when you get the same blood type, when it's like a full, full blood transfusion, isn't there still like a 50/50 that your body can reject the blood? If it's the same blood type, I don't think it should. Now remember, there is a different kind of, remember the, the R is antigen, it's a different type of antigen. Yeah. But when it comes to this, it should be no problem because that is the appropriate blood transfusion. You should not react if it's the same blood type. But can they react? Why would, they, why would there be a reaction when I only have anti-A? And that's B. If there's an R agent. Ah, that's a different story. We're not going there yet. So no. just relax, chill, 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 chill. Do not, in this world of confusion, so go get confused. We really get confused, right? Okay. Now let's move on to RH. Now, what is RH antigen? What's another name for RH antigen? D. Oh my God, you have, did you watch the video? No. Edward. In the news? Ah, in the news. Yeah, in the <laughs> news. Okay. So like me, for example, I am B positive. Dr. Gamo is type B positive. The positive means what? I am RH positive. Or what we call D antigen. Dr. D is in dog. Okay? Now, what is the significance of that? Very simple. How many of you here know that you are RH positive? Okay, RH positive means you are B positive, A positive. Okay, so that means Miss Paul and Miss Edna, we are really compatible. We are B positive, B and B positive too. Okay, so what does it mean? Very simple. So this is not the same as the A and the B antigenic surface on the antigen. It's a different kind of antigen on the red blood cell. This is the red blood cell. You have an RH antigen. Now, I'm not saying that, that that is what you will see on the, oh, there's a letter AR in the H now. It's just supposed to connote that's an RH antigen. I don't know how, how it looks like under the, the microscope. Right? So, this is what they call a problem that arises. Mother is RH what? Negative. Negative. Father, which happens to be me. Positive. Positive. RH positive. Mother and father had sex, mother got pregnant, 
baby is first baby, got the genes of daddy, which is positive, baby is already positive. Will there be a problem here? for the next baby, but there will still be a problem, okay? Mother is negative, baby is RH positive. Nine months of pregnancy, during labor and delivery. Remember, uterus, fallopian tube. Ovary is here, this is the vagina or the birth canal. When the baby comes out like this, psh, psh, what will the baby say? Thank God. Well, I'm the first baby. I'm safe. I listened to Dr. Gamo's lecture. Why would he be safe? Because when the baby comes out, what comes after the baby? Umbilical cord and placenta. Umbilical cord, placenta. In other words, the placenta will separate from the endometrial wall of the uterine cavity. And when that happens, will there be possible mixing of the baby's blood and the yes. mother's blood? Yes. yes. But the, bar, the baby, say, because the baby is already out, baby, umbilical cord lengthening with sudden gush of warm blood, which indicates placental separation, that will come out in the nursing board exam, lengthening of the umbilical cord with sudden gush of warm blood means that there is placental separation. In the process of placental separation, mixing of the mother's blood and the baby's blood will happen. And what will happen again? <coughs> enemy, enemy, interceptors, immediate launch. So the mother will develop what? Anti bodies against what? RH antigen, which came from the first baby. But the first baby is safe because the baby is already out. Remember what the baby said? Thank you, I'm the first baby. Now, who will suffer? Second baby. Mommy and daddy had sex, got pregnant, mommy. Second baby, OMG for second baby. Again, RH positive, mother still negative, never changed. But this time, the mother now has what? Antibodies. Antibodies where? In his yeah. blood. Plasma. Where do you find the plasmas, the antibodies, correct? So, during the seventh or eighth month of pregnancy, there is always no guarantee that the placenta is going to be 100% proof that there will be what? Blood and mother's blood will be separated. In other words, and especially during labor and delivery, can there be big mixing of blood yes. between the mother and the second baby? Yes. yes. Now what will happen? What will the antibodies do? Attack what? The, the, the red blood cell of the second baby. Yeah. Because what does it have? Antibodies. antibodies, right? Okay. And what does the red blood cell of the baby have? RH antigen. And what does the mother have? Anti-RH antibody. The moment that happens when the antibody form here will attack the red blood cell of the second baby, what happens to the red blood cell of the second baby? Burst, rupture. And what do you call that condition? Hemolytic disease of the newborn. Otherwise known as because it might come out in the board exam, what? Erythroblastic. What did you, I said that in the new, yeah. oh, there you go. I'm not that one. Erythroblastosis vitalis. Now, it's so easy, believe me, class. The reason why I want you to be very smart in taking the nursing board exam, because a lot of you will be contented with just knowing what this. Hemolytic disease of the newborn. I took down notes. I was so lazy. I did not copy the second notes there because I'm really lazy. I don't even bother to take down notes. <laughs> and what happens during the board exam? They will not even use this word. What will they use? And you're looking at the test paper. What the heck is erythroblastosis vitalis? And what will your grade be? What the heck do? And you're gonna be what? F A I L. What is F A I L? Now remember, our passing rate right, is 94%. Your class should be 100%. There should be no person who will fail the class. Right? Okay? So who will die? The mother or the baby? Baby. The baby. The baby will die. The baby will die at birth or before birth? Even sometimes fetal death in utero. Is it like a stillborn? 
So they would still go through contractions, so they would still go through contractions. It's called fetal death in utero? Because the possibility of this going into the baby during the last few but weeks. That they can determine from when the when you first get pregnant or no. Okay, okay. listen, listen, relax, relax, chill, chill. Okay. Okay, let, let, uh, let me, let, there's my possible, all possible questions. Okay. So, second baby will die, right? If nothing is done, how will you protect the second baby by giving mother what? Rogan. Ro, from the word R-H. What is gam? Gamo. Ga, I'm just kidding. Gamma, instead of gamo. Gamma what? Globulin, what is gamma globulin? What is gamma globulin? It's the R-H Protein. Protein. Yes? What is gamma globulin? What is a globulin? Protein. What did we learn today? What's another name for glo immunoglobulin? Now, who made this glo in antibody? Who made this? Humans, exactly. Synthetic form. Who said human? Oh my God, Mr. Rosha. You might get a perfect score today. Thank God for your baby. Okay, in other words, Mr. Rosha is correct. Rogan, who made Rogan? Humans. In the lab. What kind of humans? Smart humans. How? Smart humans who said, you know what, I need to find a way to protect the second baby by injecting the first baby's pregnancy. So we normally, I'm not an obstetrician or gynecologist, but what I remember from med school a long, long time ago, you normally give it, if I'm not mistaken, on the 27th week of pregnancy and during labor, twice injected, you're going to give the mother what? The antibodies so that the mother will not, I repeat, will not develop her own antibodies. We will preempt. Which means by giving these antibodies, what kind of immunization? Is that passive or passive? passive. What is active immunization? You give the patient what, the virus, the live attenuated. Don't worry, you will learn all of these later next time. Virus active, it means you develop antibodies, you were exposed to the virus, but it's attenuated. It's not going to be harmful. But if you inject the antibodies directly to the mother, it's called passive immunization. And what are you going to inject the mother with? Antibodies in the form of Rogan. Seventh month of pregnancy. Not, not, what did I say? Seventh, 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 seventh week? Seven, 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 yeah, not month because that's only nine months. How can it be seven and seven months? Twenty seventh week of pregnancy. That's in the beginning of the because do you understand what I'm saying? Nine, 36 weeks or 27th week. And then during labor. Will that protect the mother? Oh, the baby, the second baby. baby. Yes, it will. Are you going to inject first pregnancy? Yes. Are you going to inject second pregnancy? Yes. Third pregnancy? Yes. Now, you were mentioning about stillborn? Yes. A lot of people have this problem. Although I said, they said to me, Dr. Gama, here in the United States, it's always routine to determine what? Your RA is positive. You don't even know your blood type. What the heck? Yes, when do they determine the RA factor? During your blood typing. I was told when you donate your blood downstairs, yeah. they'll tell you your blood type, B or A or AB or O, and then they'll also tell you your RA is positive or negative. That's what I, told, I was told. Can you give them less and still find out? Hmm? Can you give them less and still find out? No, they will, I think it's, it's already automatic. Yes, Miss Pearl. If you donate blood downstairs, so you donate your blood so that you'll know. Okay? Is it the same situation if the mother is positive and the father Only when the mother is negative, nothing else. Or negative father, no problem. You can have as many babies as you want. One dozen, yes. <laughs> Only when the mother is negative and the father is positive and the baby is what? Positive. Does it make sense? Does it make sense? Antigen? Negative, antigen, positive for RH. Okay, you understand? Now, so what's the moral lesson here? You need to get your blood type. You need to go know whether you're RH positive. Now, why, how it happens? I don't know if I made this a joke on the YouTube video. You and your partner, you went to a hotel, you want to have sex with your partner, and then, oh my God, I remember Dr. Gamo. Honey, are you RH positive or negative? Yeah. Honey, I do not know. Okay, you're about to remove your underwear, abort, abort. <laughs> oh, shit. 
First thing tomorrow morning at 7 in the morning, we go to the lab, we'll have our blood exam done, and exactly 8, we'll have sex. <laughs> sex can wait. Because who will be in trouble? Our baby? Is that what I mean? Okay? Okay, now. So, will the baby die? The baby could die. The only hope is that, aside from giving Rogam, is upon birth, and you fail to give Rogam, I, what I know, I'm not an obstetrician again, it's called plasmapheresis, or it's plasmapheresis, like a dialysis machine where you get all the blood, remove all the antibodies, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, when and put that down. I have no idea. I, I, I heard that it's a, it's a thing that I, I can actually do. Okay? But the best thing you can do today is tomorrow you go to the lab and find out your blood type and your RH positive negative. Before you have sex with your partner, whoever your partner is. RH positive, do you understand? Was there a raised hand? Yes, Mr. Rosa, you have a hand raised? Yeah, I have a question about Shh. the baby's uh, blood type. How would I know, how would they know that the baby has a, a positive? Okay, it's like this. There's always a 50-50% chance, right? So just they will the never know because unless they go inside and do a amniocentesis and, you know, get the blood type now. But the 50% chance of this and this and that. Now, so they, the, the idea so is that, they like... Inject? Hmm? They just in case inject? Uh, well, that's what I know. As an obstetrician, I think it's mandated if you are negative and your husband is positive. Because would you like your baby inside to suffer and no, get a, and so get the blood type of the baby inside the mother's womb? Maybe not, right? Okay. So, so what I know is that they will presume that your baby is RH positive because the, the antibodies will not even be harmful to your baby. Okay. Just as a precautionary measure, because if not, the baby will die. I oh, know the second baby will die. And this probably is the reason why some women, when they get pregnant, the sec first baby, they have one baby only. Second baby, stillborn. Abortion. Third baby, abortion. Fourth baby. And you would say, oh, so, oh but Dr. Gama, is not that routine here in the United States? I was told it is routine, but what if it's not done properly? Or the doctor is so busy and if they overlook human error again. So you always tell your doctor, I am R H negative. Who is, who among you is R is negative? You don't have to raise, oh. <laughs> so the two of you are negative. You screen your partners. <laughs> I can never be your partner, of course. I'm already married. <laughs> You're negative. I'm positive. Our baby will be in deep stool. Except our first baby. Our second baby will suffer. I'm not, I'm not joking. I, you know what I mean, right? So I think I appreciate that you raise your hand. I know some people do. I don't want to raise my hand, even though I'm RH negative. How did you know that you were RH negative? You donated blood downstairs or before? Oh, oh you already have a baby. You were given Rogam? Yes. Thank God. Do you remember what age were you? 27th week pregnancy or you don't know? Was it twice given in the first pregnancy? Twice, yeah, I know. So you twice, like the, the first one was still, you were still, you know. Boom, 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 yeah. the second. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like that. Labor pain, I know. I had some labor pain too. When I had kidney stones, my baby stone came out into my vagina urethra. <laughs> my urethra was my, you know, we, we. Okay, do you understand this? Is this important? Will this come up? Anything that is life threatening, will that come up in the nursing board exam? Yes. Okay, now let's go to the heart. The heart, how many chambers does the heart have? Four. Okay, for well, those of you who said you have a white board, how many of you have a right board at home? All you need to do is draw a heart, even though how ugly it could be. <laughs> my heart, I left my heart. What divides the right side from the left side? Septum. 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 If it's between the atrium, interatrial septum. If it's the ventricle, interventricular septum. There's a septum made of muscle. The heart is found behind the sternum. Everybody do this, make a fist. If you put that heart, if your fist behind the sternum, or the chest plate bone here, the bone here, and behind that is the heart, as big as my fist, at the size of your heart. Anything beyond that is cardiomegaly. Megaly means big heart, okay? The heart has three layers in the wall. The wall of the heart, number one, two, three. 
If this were the heart, if you open the chambers, if you put your fingers there, what is the innermost layer of the wall of the heart? Endo. So when I say endocarditis, which one is inflamed? The endocardium, right? Endocardium. What about the second thick layer? Myo. Okay, so this is the chambers of the heart. The myo, endo, myo, and then what is the outer? Epi. And what's another name for epi? Visceral. What's another name for epi? Visceral. Visceral pericardium. Right? You understand? So, if this were the heart wall, as I've said, the wall of the heart is like this. What the heck? It won't write. As you can clearly see, this. Endo, 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 even the valves of endocardium. Myo is the thickest layer because it's a muscular pump, and the outer layer is epicardium. Correct? Now, what do you call the membrane that protects the heart? Fibrous what? Fibrous pericardium. The surface of the heart is what? The visceral pericardium or epicardium. The fibrous is here. This is the Parietal. inner lining what? Parietal. Parietal. Parietal visceral pericardium. What is the space between the visceral pericardium and the parietal pericardium? Parietal. Pericardial cavity. What does, what is found inside the pericardial cavity? Very good. Very good. Now, what produces the pericardial fluid? Pericardial membrane. The pericardial membrane, which happens to be visceral and parietal pericardium, because there are examples of what kind of membrane? Serous membrane, just like the pleura. Visceral and parietal pleura, space, pleural cavity, fluid, Plural fluid. Don't you love anatomy? How thick should this fluid be? Paper thin. Paper thin. What is the term therefore used when there is excessive amount of pericardial fluid? Oh my gosh. What is the term used when there's excessive amount of pericardial fluid? Is pericardial fluid blood? No. Is just like in the lung, is plural fluid blood? No. So my question in the quiz, what do you call it when there is blood in the plural cavity? Can that be plural effusion? No. no. Never! Because plural fluid is not blood, right? Yeah. It's called... Cardiac You're absolutely right, Mr. Petrosian. Cardiac tamponade. How many of you have been stabbed in the chest? Okay, once you volunteer, you get an A in this class. If you volunteer, I stab you with my... Knife, okay, Petrosha. David? Okay, you will, I will let you sign a piece of document that will exonerate me in the event that you will what? Just excuse me from the test and I'll do it. Will you save him after? Of course. What will I do with someone? If you have cardiac tamponade or tamponade, how do you, it's a, I think it's a, a French word, right? How do you spell it? Cardiac heart tamponade or tamponade, tam, T A M. P as in Papa O N A D E. Like Gatorade, name, tamponade, or tamponade. Okay? So, if you have a gunshot wound, stab wound, there's blood in the pericardial cavity, which should have been pericardial fluid. If it's pericardial effusion, it's just excessive amount of what? Fluid. Pericardial fluid. How hard can that be? Is pericardial fluid blood? No. No. But if it's blood, then it's called what? Are we going to drain that? Yes. With the needle and syringe. Needle and syringe. It's called what? Pericardiocentesis. Pericardiocentesis means needle syringe. The nurse provides me with a needle and syringe. I will drain the blood. Or I can drain what? The pericardial fluid if there's effusion. Now, if just remember, in the case of plural fluid diffusion, we send the lab for what? Possible infection or what? Cancer. Cancer, malignancy. But in this case, it could be pericardial diffusion, secondary to what? Infection? Maybe if there's metastatic cancer, maybe, or the very rare, but cardiac tampon is the most common. Stab wound, gunshot wound, whatever, okay? Okay. Or dashboard injuries. <laughs> How many of you drive your cars at 200 miles per hour? Okay, I like that, okay, so I will pray for you, okay? Okay, now, 
What is the chamber here? Okay, do not, I repeat, when you're taking the nursing board exam, or when you're doing a quiz, like in my class, always presume that you are looking at the patient, that this is your patient, and you are looking at that, because do not ask me which one is right, which one is left. I will never give you the answer, because that is part of what? Critical thinking and part of the exam. When you're looking at the computerized screen because you're taking a computerized exam for nursing board exam, you cannot raise your hand, proctor, proctor, which one is right, which one is left? It's the most stupid thing you could ask because you're expected to know. I am the patient, where is right? Which one is left? I'm your patient, you. Right? What is this? I am the nurse, right? So what is the right atrium? <laughs> Where's the right ventricle? Left atrium. So if you get this interchange, all your answers will be wrong. Can you imagine if all the answers are wrong? If I ask five questions on this, all the five answers will be wrong. Because you didn't do your homework, you didn't study well, and that is the world of confusion. What did Confucius say? I'm just kidding. Now, what blood vessels bring blood to the right atrium? Superior vena cava. And? And where did the blood come from? From the veins of the head, the neck, and the upper limbs? Here. Head, neck, upper extremity, veins. What about the veins from the feet, the leg, the thigh? Feet, leg, thigh, and the rock of abdominal organs below the heart? Which makes sense, isn't it amazing? Veins from the leg, the foot, leg, and thigh, and lower thoracic region, right? Okay. It's like a 405 north and 405 south. They all meet where? In the right atrium, which happens to be the Union Station. Okay? Now it goes there. And what is the name of the valve between the right atrium and the right ventricle? Is the tricuspid valve an example of an atrioventricular valve? Yes. Because it is found between the atrium and the ventricle. Yes. How many cusp? C-U-S-P is a tricuspid valve. That's why it's called three. Tricusp. I like this class. <laughs> now, where does the blood go from here? Right ventricle goes where? Okay, like this, right? One artery, one artery, pulmonary artery to the left lung, right? What is the name of the valve there? Pulmonary, pulmonary. pulmonary valve. How many to cast? Same thing, tricuspid. Now let's remove that. So let's move that here. But this is what you see in your what? Remember the page that we dissected? Mm -hmm. It is right in front of the aorta, right? So, so for simple discussion, I just put it here. It goes to the lung, to the pulmonary what? Trunk, which divided to the right and left one. Arteries. Right and left, pulmonary one. No, no, sorry. This is where a lot of people get confused. If you put vein, you are in deep shit. Because that means you didn't really study well. But it should always be what? Arteries. Now, what are the chances you get confused? 99%. That's why perfection means what, right? Can you imagine if you do this 100 times a day? Just like what I told you about the lab. Remember what I told you about the lab? Those pictures and martini, what were you supposed to do? Make two copies of the martini page textbooks, pages, remember? We give you a list, and what do you do? White out, and then what? The answer key is there. Can you imagine if make 20 copies of that block, the exam you created? Oh my God, you should get a perfect score in the lab. Perfect score, right? How many of you did that? Raise your hand. I draw. Okay, nobody? Only a few? Okay, so you must be very good in your memory station then, okay? Okay, now, from the lung, the blood is carbon dioxide rich on the right side. You get rid of the carbon dioxide rich blood on the right side. Because veins, venous blood is carbon dioxide rich. Goes to the lung. What happens in the lung? Exchange of gases take place. Exhale carbon dioxide, you inhale CO oxygen. So the blood goes back by your what? How many do we have? Four. 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 Two from the right, two from the left lung, right? To pulmonary vein. I'm lucky today we just dissected the heart of our cadaver at UCLA Medical School. I told the medical, or see, two pulmonary veins, 
two pulmonary veins on the right and left, and we cut, we remove the heart. So what they learned today is what you learned today, except that we have a virtual cadaver here, okay? Two cadavers, a white cadaver with four pulmonary veins. Now, once it enters the left atrium, what is the valve here? Mitral valve. Mitral valve or bicuspid valve, right? And then it goes where? Left ventricle then goes where? Okay, so let's make another drawing here. The left ventricle, ascending aorta, arch, and then what? Ascending means going up, arch means arch, then descending, going down. You understand what I mean? Okay. And it goes here, right? And then it goes into thoracic cavity, it's called thoracic aorta, pierces the diaphragm, it becomes what? Abdominal, Abdominal aorta, then goes into the area of the pelvis, divides into the right common iliac and left common Abdominal iliac. iliac. Then external iliac, internal iliac, bifurcation, okay? Do you understand? Yes. So I have done here veins, arteries. So for example, in the kidneys, what do you call the artery from the aorta, abdominal aorta that goes to the kidney? Renal. Renal, because what does renal mean? Kidney. What about the artery to the liver? <laughs> and where did it come from? Liver. What about the artery to the spleen? Spleen. Oh my goodness. And where did all the blood come from? The which chamber of the heart? The In other words, when you dissected the pig's heart, which chamber had the thickest wall? The, the left ventricle. Why? Because the left ventricle is the main pump. Does it make sense? Yes. Now what do valves do? They stop, the they stop blood that flow. Two things. They allow the blood to flow in one direction and prevent what? Backflow. Backflow. As always. Now, what produces your first heart sound? Love, dub. Remember, or tick, tick, or love, dub, love, dub, or love, dub. S1, S2. First heart sound. Closure of tricuspid and bicuspid what? Valves. What about a second heart sound? Closure of what? Pulmonary and aortic valve. When they close, they produce that sound. Remember the word? If you put a stethoscope on the chest, remember what's a stethoscope? Earpiece on the ear, you have a stethoscope, you put a stethoscope diaphragm here, you can listen to the heart sound. Chig jig, 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 right? Now, what will make the muscles contract? When the muscles contract, it's called systole. When the muscles relax, it's called what? What makes the muscles contract? Coming from where? Electrical impulses come from where? Pacemakers of the heart. What is the primary pacemaker of the heart? Okay. So the idea therefore is, let's try to erase this. The heart is here, the septum is there, right atrium, in the wall of the right atrium between the SVC or severe venous cava and right atrial appendages, the SA node is there. In the interatrial septum, above the fossa ovale, you have what? AB1 node. Then the bundle of his right bundle branch, right bundle branch, then Purkinje 1. So what will make the muscles in the ventricles contract? Purkinje fibers. What will make the muscles in the atrium contract? SA node. Sends a signal to the atrial wall made up of muscles. It's a muscular pump. In other words, the muscles our muscles, even in the heart, do not contract unless there is a nerve or electrical impulse. In the case of the heart, they come from what? The pacemakers of the heart. SA node sends a signal to the right and the left at the same time, or maybe there is a slight lag. When they send the signal, what happens to the muscles? They will contract what? At the same time. Bam! Muscles contract, what happens to the blood? Goes down at the same time. What happens to the valves here? Close. Oh, it down it opens. Why would they close? They open. Why? Because the blood is going down. It's called atrial what? Systole. Systole means muscle contraction. But the ventricles here must be what? Relaxed to be able to accept the blood. Come to me, mama. Okay. So, systole contract, ventricular relaxed. But what happens to the valves in the pulmonary valve? Close, aortic valve, close. Maybe it's, I'm just trying to make it simple. So that they will stay in the chambers called ventricles. 
So the pulmonary valve must close, the aortic valve must close. Instead of drawing the more elaborate one like this, I'm just making it simple. So it's SVC, IVC, pulmonary veins, right? So this pulmonary trunk, aorta, okay? I'm, I'm doing a simplified version. So when this contract coming from the SA node, open, they go here, they go here at the same time. I'm oh, no, sorry, so close, close. Where is the blood now? In the ventricles. As the blood is flowing here, what happens to the electrical signal? It also starts to descend very sophisticatedly perfect. As the blood is going down, shh, the, the electrical impulse will travel, SA, AV node, bundle with percutaneous fiber. By the time this is filled with blood, what will the percutaneous fibers do here? Stimulate the ventricle muscle. Bang! This will open. This will open at the same time. Bang! To the lung, to the aorta. At the same time. At the same. And this must be closed. It will not backflow. So you have atrial systole, ventricular diastole. When this goes into ventricular systole, this must be what? So that it can what? It will be the return to what? Come to the atrium, and this must be closed. It's so perfect, okay? Now, have you heard about this? Electrocardiogram. Who, who is responsible for the electrical activity of the heart? The pacemakers of the heart, right? Right, do you understand? So when I have something like this, the distance from this to this is equidistant. Equidistant means equal. Now, are you familiar with the, I don't know if I saw this in the YouTube? A, B, C, D, E, F, G. H I J K L M N O P Q R S T U N B. We're gonna study the E C G. Boys and girls, come learn with me. Let us sing the E C G. Thank you, thank you. P wave, Q R S wave, and T wave. The P wave represents what? Atrial. Atrial what? Atrial depolarization. And that is called the electrical activity of the heart brought about by the SA node. And what will be the result? What is the mechanical event? Electrical event, atrial depolarization. What will be the mechanical event? Of what? Atrial systole which means as a node, bam! Systole, contract, blood goes down into the ventricles, okay? And what about the QRS complex? So as it reaches the perichondial fibers, you have what? Ventricular what? Depolarization. Depolarization is a simple word. You can use the word stimulation. What do you stimulate? The ventricular muscles that will lead to what? Ventricular what? Systole. And what comes after the QRS wave? And that is ventricular what? Repolarization, Re which means relaxation. And what do you have? Ventricular. Diastole, when the muscles relax. Yeah. Right? You understand? Mm -hmm. Now, this is regular rhythm. It's called regular sinoatrial sinus rhythm. S I N U S. Regular R S R. Now, what happens if there's. Remember, the, the, what does the aorta give to the heart? The coronary arteries, right? What does the coronary arteries bring to the muscles of the heart? Oxygen. Oxygenated blood, right? If there's not enough oxygen to the SA node and the AV node, will that affect the pacemakers of the heart? Yes. You develop an arrhythmia. What's an arrhythmia? Irregular. Something like this. Ventricular fibrillation. Ventricular what? Fibrillation. And what is that? What is a flat line indicate? Cardiac arrest. Cardiac arrest is a flat line. There is no electrical current. 
the patient is dead. <laughs> Why? If there is no electrical activity, then there is no what? No electrical simulation? Dead. No ECG. Electrocardiogram is an electrical activity recording of the, a recording of the electrical activity of the heart. Now in car ventricular fibrillation, it quivers, not an effective pump. And then goes into what? Cardiac arrest, which means the heart stops pumping. Why? Because you have a flat line. Flat line is a straight flat line. And what do I tell the nurse? Stand clear, everybody clear, you're clear, I'm clear. 300 Stand clear, I'm clear. No response, no response, no response. Time of death. 7.35 p.m. West Coast Medical Center. But if you are successful, start clear, I'm clear, everybody clear. Can you imagine if you can do that and save the life of a patient because you applied what you have learned in this class as a nurse? When I do this in the emergency room, do I expect my nurses to provide, if I say, code blue, code blue, are you going to give me the crash cart? Will that crash cart have all the defibrillators in the world? Do you understand? Do we have an ambu bag and I need to intubate the patient? Do I need you to provide me with all the medications I need? Do you have to work slowly or fast? Very fast. It can be like... Now, do we have something that is a defibrillator here. Yeah. What is it called? AED. What is it called? AED. What does AED stand for? It's an huh? It's an automated. Okay, is it automatic or automated? Automated. Now, it's automated external defibrillator AED. Now, look at the spelling downstairs. Especially the first room near the guard on that side there. What did they put there? Automatic. It is embarrassing. Wrong spelling is wrong. No! <laughs> Considering that this is a what? OMG for Dr. G. Every time I see that, I hide myself. What is the proper terminology? Automated. OK. How many of you have used that? Automated. Have you used it in an actual patient or just for demonstration purposes? You were able to save the patient's life? It's okay, I just tried. How many of you have was able to use it and save a person's life? Not yet. Okay. How many of you know how to use an AED machine or device? Yeah. Make sure because if I go into, you know what to do with me. It walks you through it. It yeah, talks to you. I know, I know, but some people are so not paying attention. <laughs> you have to concentrate. They, do, they analyze everything. <laughs> Charging. Soft <laughs> ready. It's so easy. It's user friendly. It's user friendly. You understand? Okay? Now, in fact, this is really what happened. One time, in, in, in microbiology and pathophysics, we have group reports. Right? We have group reports, right? What happens when you have group reporting? People are asked to speak in front of people, right? So, one time, I'm just going to share this to you so that you know what to do. One of the students, unfortunately, what? was so tense and so stressed, she fell, had cardiac arrest, had to be what? Oh CPR, they called the paramedics. The problem was they, they didn't know how to use the AED. So they had to call what? The, uh, the nursing faculty in the other room. It's a couple of maybe two or three minutes delay. Anyway, this point. No, no, before the paramedics came. Before they came, right? Because we have a machine now, we have a device, right? Okay. So before the paramedics came, you have to know how to operate the device. Please, por favor. All you need to do is turn it on, or some of them, when you open it, it automatically tells you what to do. All you need to do is concentrate on focus. Just listen and do what they tell you to do. This guy, he was my former student. Uh, he was my student in lecture. It was in the lab, so I felt so bad. Because I came in at one, and it happened in the lab, thank God, not in my lecture class. But I knew what to do, so it could have been easier. 
But what happened was when I saw the patient, he was in the ambulance, comatose, ambubag, they were doing to and they were doing this. I felt so bad because I, so if I found out he had a wife and the kids were still very small. Oh, he died? He was alive. He was survived, he recovered. And even graduated, I think he passed the NCLEX. And we're even friends on Facebook. He got an excuse then. <laughs> I befriended him because it was a miracle. I'm not kidding. I have never seen somebody recover from being coma, you know, as in, as in cardiac arrest and recovered. So I think maybe if you believe in angels and God, maybe it's a miracle. <gasps> I, I work as a hospital, in the hospital. You, you are lucky to get, this, get these people when you do these things. It's very rare. Well, we do that a lot of in the ICU. We do a lot of this, but when you have somebody recovering from this, wow, amazing. Okay, okay. So we talked about the heart. Uh, did we talk over everything about the heart? The blood vessels, chambers, oh, the coronary arteries, right? Coronary arteries. They come from the aorta, right? How, how many are there? Two. Two. Right and left. Right and left. The left has left anterior descending branch or anterior interventricular, and then the other one is what? Circumflex, Circumflex to the back. The right coronary has marginal branches and then goes to the back to become posterior what? Descending posterior descending artery or posterior interventricular, which will meet what? The circumflex of the back. People with heart disease or what we call coronary artery disease, what happens? There's what? Complex. Fat deposits in the wall of the artery, like this one. If this were an artery, you have fat deposits, which is flat plaque, F-E-L-A-Q-E. It's called atherosclerosis when you have fat deposits. Right. Will it cause narrowing? Will there, will there be decreased blood flow to the myocardium? Here, right? It's called what? Ischemia. So it's called ischemic heart disease. Will there be chest pain or angina? Yes. There will be. Now, that's just, it will not kill you yet. Not yet. Okay? After one year of going back to the hospital's ER, they give you those drugs under the tongue, nitroglycerin, what will that drug do? Vasodilate. Vasodilate, open up, even though the fats are still there, it will increase the blood flow. Will that relieve the chest pain? Hopefully, right? So it's called anti-anginal medications. Now, what happens now? If you give nitroglycerin half, right? But as time goes by, you're not careful with your diet, like me. I have so much fat here. Where do you think my excess fat will go? Into the artery. As time goes by, it gets bigger and bigger. What happens to the blood flow? Lesser, lesser. And then eventually, the blood becomes what? Not only less blood flow called ischemia, it will cause a blood clot to form. So you have fat and blood clot. What will a clot and fat do? Black completely. If you black completely, there is no blood, there is no oxygen. What is MI? Myocardium. Infarction. Infarction means death of what? The myocardium. Of the myocardial cells, the muscle cells. And that is how you can develop the cardiac arrest. You understand? Yes. So we can do bypass surgery. In bypass, all we do is there is a blood clot here. Ta -da 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 -da. We get the leg veins. This is the leg vein. One end, one end. We put one end here, and we put the other one beyond the clot, like this. So remember, when there's heavy traffic, there's an accident on 170, what do you get? Instead of going at uh, Victory, you go at Burbank, right? Then what, Lower Canyon? And you reach West Coast. You, you bypass the obstruction. So if you have three sides, here, triple bypass. Now, if you do not want to use the leg veins, you can use what? Internal mammary artery or the radial artery. That's what I was told, okay? Do you understand? Yes. Now, there are other, I will not go into that anymore. It's called PTCA, percutis transcript coronary angioplasty, where they insert a catheter here. A catheter has a balloon at the tip. So remember, external, uh, the femoral becomes external iliac, external iliac becomes common iliac, common iliac becomes what? Aorta. And you insert into the aorta like this, and then once you reach it, what do you do with the catheter? With, that is without the blood clot yet. You inflate the balloon, what will the balloon that is inflated do to the fat? It will push the fat to the side, 
It will make the passageway what? Open. Bigger. And they put a stent to keep it open. A few years ago, when I was in med school in the 80s, this was not available yet. Now, it can prolong life for people like you. You're lucky, okay? I'm also lucky because it can be done to me. It's called PTCA, percutaneous transluminal, because you insert into the lumen of the blood vessel, coronary angioplasty. You ought to write this down. Angio means artery, plasty means repair. Okay, do you understand? Now, so we talked about blood, chambers of the heart, the blood vessels, basically it's the same thing. Make sure you know what comes out here. Remember, left subclavian, common carotid, brachycephalic, what else do you have here? Right subclavian, and then what? Common carotid. Now, why do you need to know this blood vessel? I will tell you why. One of the things you will have in the nursing board exam is you have a picture of a person, and you were told a patient had a cast on the right leg, you were expected to check for the pedal pulses or dorsalis pedal pulse. Do you expect you to know that? Yes. yes. They will give you a drawing of the foot, and this is the foot. Where is the dorsalis pedis pulse? On the top. On the top. Here. Dorsal. What about here? Plantar. If you put here, then you are not a graduate of West Coast. Not back, not front, but here. Dorsalis pedis pulse. What about, I say, check for the brachial pulse. Where's the brachial pulse? Side. Here, on the side. Everybody palpate your brachial artery pulse. In fact, that's what you do when you get your what? Blood pressure, right? Mm -hmm. Remember the cuff that you put there? There's what? There's an artery. You have to put that arrow where? Where the artery is. Here, see, look at that. Oh my God, I'm so alive. My pulse is so how dare you? bounding. Mm -hmm. yep. Now, how many doctors and nurses do that in the emergency room? No yeah. one. Believe me. I'm not saying not, but maybe, maybe a few. What do they do? They just get the cuff of a sphygmo manometer, a device measuring a blood pressure is called sphygmo manometer. What do they do? They do what? They, they ignore what? The arrow? What do they do? <laughs> so the arrow is here. What are they measuring? The blood pressure of the triceps muscle. No, I'm just kidding. You can still get the blood pressure, but remember, this was calibrated that the artery should have been here with that arrow that says, what does the arrow say in the cuff? C-U-F-F, artery. You understand? So please do it in the artery where you have to check first the pulse, right? You understand? Now, the veins, very simple. The veins, what do you call the longest vein in the leg and the foot? Saphenous vein, right? But the, the vein here, femoral vein, why? What's the name of the bone here? Femur. What about the vein at the back? Popliteal. What about the artery at the back? What do you call this part of your body? Popliteal region. What about the artery of the arm? Brachial artery. Divide into radial because it goes to the radius and then what? Ulnar. What do you call the artery in the axilla? Oh my God. The axillary becomes brachial. Brachial divides to radial and ulnar. The axillary came from where? Subclavian. What does sub mean? Club below the clavicle. And where did the subclavian come from on the right? Brachial. And where did the brachial come from? Aorta. What about the one on the left? Radial, ulnar, brachial, then what? Subclavian. Axillary, then? Subclavian, Subclavian then? Carotid. Directly from the aortic arch, right? You understand? Yes. Okay. If you know that, you're good in anatomy. You have to know that, okay? Same thing in the foot, arteries and veins. The veins, some of them have the same name. What's the vein of the artery? Of the kidneys, renal artery, what's the name of the vein? Hepatic. Renal vein. What about the liver? Hepatic. hepatic artery, hepatic vein. But there is the special type of vein, remember? Portal vein. So the hepatic vein, blood to the inferior vena cava. But the hepatic portal vein, blood from the intestines to what? The liver. liver. Uh, the only exception, right? Okay. Now, what connects an artery with a vein? Okay. What do you call a small artery? Arterial. 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 What do you call a small vein? vein. And what is this? Capillary. Made of squamous cells, very flat cells with pores, or fenestrated, or non-fenestrated. That's why if this were a cell, or cell, or cell, the artery, the red blood cell contains what? O2, right? From high to what? Low. And where does the cell go? Who, who will be the new passenger of the red blood cell? CO2. CO2. And goes into the veins. You should understand that, right? Now, lymphatic circulation. Oh now, remember this. If you have 
This is very important. For the simple reason, when you do not, what is going to have a problem when you go to physiology and core nursing and pathophysiology is the lack of knowledge in anatomy. People, they study for the quiz, they, they, they cram. So they know it today, the following day they forget. That should not be the case. But if you just told, what I told you about the whiteboard, do this every day, you will not forget, right? Okay, now, this is a cell, this is a cell, 